Hamburgers. There's so many different options out there, and for good reason. Hamburgers are simple, yet they're so delicious. Now, working as a professional chef for many years, I have had an opportunity to make thousands of burgers, and I've picked up a few tricks along the way. So the purpose of this video is to share what I've learned working in a professional kitchen so that you can elevate your burgers at home. So in this video, I created a spicy mushroom burger. It's one of my favorites. But if you don't like mushrooms, that's fine. All I'm doing is teaching you basic principles for a burger to improve the quality of what you're eating. So don't feel like you need to turn away just because you're someone that doesn't like mushrooms. Okay, so first things first, whenever we're making something at home, we need to take into account the quality of the ingredients that we're using. So let's talk about ground beef. I find that when you go to a grocery store, the lowest quality of ground beef you can find is what they're selling. Typically, the ground beef you buy at the store is just scraps of meat that have been sitting in the cooler for a couple days that have been ground up and quickly wrapped up just so they can get rid of it. But I find if you want to improve the quality of your ground beef, there's three different things you can do. A, you can go directly to a butcher. You can ask the butcher for a specific cut of cow to be used for your ground beef. And when you do this, you also ensure that the ground beef is not old. The second thing you can do is you can just grind it at home. If you have a KitchenAid at home, all you gotta do is get the attachment and you can just grind fresh right at home. That way you know exactly what's going into your meat. Or the third thing you can do is you can just buy steak and just chop it up into small pieces by hand. That's not a bad option either. But even if you're getting ground beef at the store, there's nothing wrong with it. The tips and tricks I'm gonna show you in this video are gonna help you elevate your burger game. Next, let's talk about bread. When I'm looking for bread, I wanna take into account that it needs to be bread that is good enough to eat on its own. Personally, I stay away completely from the bread aisle as I feel like all the bread in the bread aisle is not that great and I go directly to the bakery. I'm looking for a bun that's dense enough to be able to support the weight of the meat, but I don't want it so dense where it just feels heavy and weighs me down for the rest of the day. So I like a nice balance there. Another thing that's important to keep in mind when making a burger is that you want proper meat to bun ratio. We've all been at some sort of cookout where someone's given us a burger where the burger is three times larger than the bun and it's just super awkward to eat. We're gonna prevent that by taking this into account before we start cooking our burger. Now before I continue with this video, go ahead and let me know down below in the comments what your favorite tip is when making burgers. Maybe it's something I don't share in this video. And I'm sure a lot of people in the community would love to hear it. So go ahead and let me know below. All right, let's get back into it. First things first, we wanna have a hot cooking surface. This ensures that when we start cooking, we get what's called the Maillard reaction. The Maillard reaction is what is responsible for that nice browning sear that you get when you start cooking. Also, before I start cooking, I make sure that I put a little bit of oil down. If you had a microscope and were able to zoom into your grill or cooking surface, you'd notice small little ridges and valleys. When you put oil on your cooking surface, the oil actually fills in those little hills and valleys, making it so that your meat won't stick as easily. Okay, so before we start cooking our burger, there's two things we need to do. The first thing I like to do is I like to take my thumb and I like to make a little imprint in the middle of the patty. This is gonna prevent the patty from poofing up when you're cooking it. The second thing you need to do is obvious, you need to season it. I just season with salt and pepper. I find that I add so much flavor through other elements of my burger that I don't need to overcomplicate the seasoning of the patty. Just make sure that if you're using really thin patties, you're using light seasoning, and if they're thicker, you can add a little bit more. But again, just don't overcomplicate the seasoning. Now when we start cooking, you have one opportunity to press the burger down. If you press your burger down during the cooking process, you're gonna release all the juices. But when the fat is cold, it's actually retaining the water. So when you put your burger on a hot surface, you're able to smash it down immediately if you'd like to. That's the beauty of a smash burger and why it's still juicy when you're eating it. It's because it's smashed right away and then it's not smashed again. So all the juices are still retained because the fat is still cold. Now once I get my burger on, I'm gonna start my bun. So a couple things with the bun. Don't be scared to put butter on it. I think this is one of the biggest mistakes a lot of people make when making their burger is they're not putting enough butter on it. If you were to take two buns and toast them side by side, one you have loaded up with butter and the other you just have a thin layer of butter, they'll be completely different. The butter adds flavor to your bun, but it also turns it into a nice piece of garlic bread. Trust me, the butter is super, super important. Now let's toast the bread. When we toast the bread, we want it to be crispy. This crispiness is gonna help support the weight of the burger, but it's also gonna protect the bread from becoming soggy from the juices. Now, right before the bread comes off, I like to steam it by putting a lid over it real quickly, maybe for only 10 to 15 seconds. What this is gonna do is gonna help soften the outside of the bread. If you think about a slider, what makes a slider so good is that they actually steam the bread. This literally just helps it slide down your throat. That's the idea of it. So we want our bread to be soft and we accomplish it by just putting a lid over the bread for 15 seconds or so. 
Then when the bread comes off, another trick I picked up throughout my career is that I put the top bun on top of the bottom bun, and then the heat being released in the bottom bun actually keeps the top bun soft. Now let's go back to the patty. If you're cooking in a pan at home, you have the opportunity to baste your meat. Now there's a common misconception out there about basting. Basting does not actually help your burger retain its juices. All it's gonna do is help the Maillard reaction. It's gonna give you a little bit more flavor by helping give it an even cook and also by helping caramelize the outside. So when you flip your burger, just add a little bit more fat. Keep basting as this is gonna make your burger a lot more flavorful. Now the next couple steps you wanna accomplish before your burger is done. So let's say you're cooking for a medium. When a burger is mid-rare, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it another pinch of salt and pepper and I'm gonna put the cheese on top. Now when I'm cooking my burger, I don't want my cheese completely melted. I just want it resting on top. So by putting the cheese on before the burger's completely done, it's gonna be resting on top at the same time that the burger's being finished. Then I'm gonna take the burger out of the pan or off the grill or whatever, and I'm gonna put it on the side and I'm gonna let it rest. By adding a pinch of salt and pepper before the cheese, I'm gonna increase the flavor of the burger, and by letting it rest, I'm gonna help the burger retain its juices. Now let's start building the burger. I definitely want some sort of condiment, whether it's mayonnaise, ketchup, barbecue, whatever your poison is, don't be shy. Your condiment is not only gonna add another layer of texture, but your condiment is also gonna help protect the bun from becoming soggy from the juices, as it's gonna add a protective layer. Then I add my vegetables. When I'm adding lettuce to the burger, I always use chopped up lettuce. I never use full rounds of lettuce. If I use a full leaf, I feel like it's easy just to tear the entire leaf out. But when it's chopped, not only will that not happen, but it also gives it the eye appeal of elevating the burger and making it look a little bit taller. For the rest of my vegetables, whether it's tomato, cucumber, onion, pickle, whatever it is, I want uniform cuts. You don't want your vegetables to be cut at an angle because then when you put the burger on, it's just gonna slide right off. So to prevent that, we have even cuts in our burger. I also use the vegetables as another reason to add a layer of flavor. So I salt my lettuce and I salt my tomatoes. That way it draws out some of the moisture and increases the crispiness of the lettuce and it'll actually bring out more flavor in the tomato. And then from here, I just start constructing the burger how I like it. In this video, I use oyster mushrooms. I just fry it in a little bit of flour and cornstarch. And when it's done, I let it drain to soak up all the oil. Then I just season it with a little bit more salt and pepper. And that's it, it's, it's pretty easy. And then there you have it. Just construct your burger how you like it, but these small all little steps and details that we pay attention to along the way is gonna help elevate your burger. If you want this recipe and specifically want to know how I created this burger, go ahead and check out my website which I have linked in my description.